A third Greek bailout is one step closer today after the president, Alexis Tsipras, managed to secure parliamentary approval for his new deal with the Eurozone, with a majority of 229 to 64 against, which involves a new commitment to austerity, a raft of tax hikes and pension reforms. Outside Parliament, outrage from Greeks who felt betrayed after the referendum that had delivered the firm no to more austerity. But for the Greek leader, this was a deal that Greeks could not refuse. This blackmail that you refer to, do you believe that it is real or imagined? If you believe that it is imagined, then I am open to alternative options, and we can go forward that way. If, however, you believe the blackmail is real, then there is no other option than for all of us to share the burden of this responsibility. Well, Dr Oliver Hartwich is the executive director of public policy think tank The New Zealand Initiative and has been following the Eurozone negotiations very closely and he joined me a short time ago from Wellington. Oliver Hartwich, well your predictions last week were bang on, we do have a deal. Would you call this the end of the beginning? Well, the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end. Um, wherever we are at this stage, uh, it is still very confusing actually. We just had the uh, vote in the Greek Parliament, so they've accepted the first prior actions that they had to pass. Um, but this deal could still fall through, of course, because we've got a number of parliaments involved. So the Greek Parliament will have to vote again on new measures. The German Bundestag will have to agree to uh, new negotiations to grant um, bailouts uh, from the ESM. It has to go through a number of other European parliaments. Interesting remark, actually, that today from Wolfgang Schäuble, the German finance minister. He said the plans for Grexit are no longer on the table. They're just in the drawer. And what exactly was the alternate plan from German finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble? The plan that Wolfgang Schäuble um, proposed at the meeting over the last weekend was to take Greece out of the Eurozone for, say, five years and see whether the country could actually recover outside. And once recovered, it might actually rejoin the Euro at a later stage. At the same time, Schäuble always said that, of course, uh, the German government would be prepared to still support Greece even outside the Eurozone because that's probably what they would need. They would need some humanitarian aid in the immediate uh, aftermath of an, a Euro exit. Um, so that was Schäuble's idea. And actually, I, I had a lot of sympathy for the idea because we have seen over the past five years that it was almost impossible to reform Greece while it remained in the Eurozone simply because it couldn't have an external devaluation, which the country desperately needs. So I thought the Schäuble plan was not too bad, but of course it didn't have a chance in the end. And uh, the bailout deal that we're left with, now Alexis Tsipras calls this blackmail. Chancellor Angela Merkel has been accused in Germany of blackmail. The trust is very fragile there, if there at all. Yes, but I think it is unfair to uh, put the blame on the Germans alone because everybody has to take uh, a part of the blame in this game. Um, I think the German government didn't really have another chance. Uh, they had to give a bailout package because there was simply too much pressure on them. The Germans were under pressure from the US government. They were concerned about geopolitical implications of, of a Greek exit from the Eurozone. They were under pressure from the International Monetary Fund because they require a third bailout package in order to be repaid on, this, on the second bailout package that they gave them. Um, the same motivation really for the European Central Bank. They also think that by granting Greece another bailout package that makes it more likely that the ECB will actually see some of its money back rather than having to write that off and landing in negative equity. And of course, there was um, pressure from the French government on the Germans as well because that's probably the best chance for the French president to reclaim some leadership in Europe by positioning himself against Angela Merkel on this issue. Yes, there seems to be a lot of politics in all this. How do you read the split in Syriza and the stability of a future Greek government? Well, you're absolutely right. The uh, politics are absolutely fascinating. Under normal circumstances, a government that doesn't have a majority of its own in parliament would have to resign. And um, Alexis Tsipras, of course, lost its majority in the recent um, bailout vote. Um, but these are not normal circumstances, of course. So I think it is quite likely that Tsipras will stay on probably even with his current coalition as a, some kind of minority government, because he can always rely on opposition parties to back him up and support him, because the opposition party, uh, parties, especially the conservative Nia Democrazia, have made it very clear that they are in favor of the bailout packages because they want to keep Greece in the euro. So it is possible that Tsipras will stay in power nominally with his old coalition, but de facto with an all-party coalition, including the opposition. And what would you see as the biggest risk going forward? Well, I think there's an immediate risk, um, and the immediate risk is that they need to find a few billion euros very quickly. 
because the ECB has to be repaid on some of its loans to Greece on the 20th of July. That's a repayment that's due, uh, worth 3.5 billion euros. They need to get that money quickly from somewhere because um, even if the bailout package goes, goes through, it will take until probably late August until money is accessible from this new third bailout package. But in the meantime, they still need to find a few billions here and there to repay the ECB, to pay pensioners, to actually pay the public servants. So there are still quite a few issues along the way until we even have that third bailout package. We're going to hear from the ECB's Mario Draghi later tonight on the financing for the Greek banks. What do you expect him to do? I think he will probably keep the current emergency liquidity assistance to Greek banks at the level they are at, or maybe marginally increase that. Uh, so they're currently standing at about 90 billion euros, because that's the only chance really the ECB has to um, keep Greek banks alive, because otherwise they would be insolvent overnight. Um, beyond that, uh, Draghi will just have to watch whether the bailout package goes ahead, whether the ESM will actually pay money to Greece, because if it fails, then the ECB would be forced to basically withdraw the ELA assistance to Greece, and that basically means that the Greek um, financial system would just collapse. I guess one surprise in all this was the somewhat blistering attack from the IMF on a bailout deal. Not such a surprise, really, because we have already seen um, quite a few leaks over the past few weeks from the IMF. The IMF has actually made it very clear that they think that Greece's um, debt load is not sustainable in the long term. So the IMF has actually called for a partial debt relief and a debt restructuring for a while. And so in a way, this new paper that we have just seen from the IMF didn't come as a complete surprise. Isn't the elephant in the room, though, the fact that Greek will be saddled with yet more debt and a, a shrinking economy? I mean, at what stage will all this stop? Well, I think, first of all, we have to probably take a slightly different view at the total debt load for Greece. I would agree with the IMF that long term uh, the Greek debt load is not sustainable. So at some stage they will probably have to have some debt relief or a haircut or restructuring or however you might call that. However, I don't think that's a, uh, an urgent problem at this, t at this stage because if you're just looking at the way that Greek debt is structured, you can see that a lot of the interest payments are deferred, so Greeks only really has to start paying interest on the EFSF loans from 2023. So in the meantime, the Greek debt load and the Greek debt servicing load is actually quite limited. There are other European countries, Portugal, Spain, Italy, that are actually paying more interest as a percentage of GDP than Greece. And actually Greece only pays marginally more than Germany at this stage. So I don't think it's a pressing issue at the moment to really deal with the Greek debt load as a total and restructure it. I think it's a long-term challenge, so I agree with the IMF in the long run. I think even if we restructured Greek debt today, it wouldn't really help them much in the short run. You've argued that for Greece to be competitive, we will have to have a Grexit. This is surely a Band-Aid solution, and aren't we creating a much bigger problem for somebody else to deal with down the track? Yes, we are. And we've been doing this for five years, of course. If you just look at the beginning of the Greek bailout program in 2010 and you compare the situation with today, you can see a few things. You can see that debt to GDP has gone up from about 120% back then to 180% of GDP today. You can see that GDP per capita at the same time has fallen from about 31,000 US dollars per capita to just about $25,000 today. You can also see that unemployment has almost doubled really from 13 to 25, 26% today. So these bailout packages haven't worked. We have actually tried to solve a debt crisis with more debt and that simply can't work. So I, I actually remain convinced that the only way to get Greece out of its current problems is really to have a debt restructuring combined with an exit from the Eurozone for Greece to be able to regain competitiveness, to restructure its economy, to actually find a pathway back to economic growth, because that's what they need. Manana, manana, Dr. Oliver Hartwich, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.